This podcast is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world, and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage and microgrid solutions. And KimPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm Francie, and today we're talking about Stellantis. Who is Stellantis? Why is Stellantis? Well, Stellantis is a major automaker company, an umbrella of sorts under which Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Dodge, Fiat, Jeep, and Ram abide. And they have just announced their all new fully electric platform, the STLA Large Platform, on which they will build their future in electric cars, which, as you see, is really all they have in terms of electric offerings, a future. Let's plug in. So hold the phone, Francie, you're probably saying to yourself right now, has Stellantis even announced their plans for J3400, previously known as the North American Charging Standard, previously known as the Tesla Connector? No, they have not announced their plans to incorporate native or adapters for the standard J3400, but they are part of the seven automakers who banded together to announce a North American charging network effort. So they will just win. As per their own statement about their battery electric vehicle goals, we are setting the course for 100% of sales in Europe and 50% of sales in the United States to be battery electric vehicles by the end of this decade. So they better get a move on. Let's talk about this platform. So the battery electric vehicle native STLA large platform, this will be used in the next eight Vehicles launched between 2024 and 2026, Dodge and Jeep first, followed by Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, and Maserati. You know, we've heard whispers about more electric models to come out in 2024 from brands under Stellantis, but nothing is super, super confirmed. And perhaps we'll see a model year 2025 Jeep Wagoneer S available in the U.S. in the fall. This features 600 horsepower and 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, but that's all we've really heard there. There's also possibility of the Jeep Recon availability expected this year in 2024. And Jeep is getting a lot of attention, it seems, from within Stellantis. There's also Dodge Charger EV possibilities. It's on a different platform, and it's that muscle car EV that actually makes the same noises. It mimics the noises of a normal Dodge Charger. Those which we don't lack in my city, actually. They are everywhere, and they typically denote a driver that is having a little too much fun on the road. The STLA Large is a flexible platform, as it has been described. So with the wheelbase, the length, the width, the height, the ground clearance, you can adjust all of that. You can also adjust the suspension as well. It offers both 400 and 800 volt architectures. It has a three in one electric drive module and you can have performance updates over the air, which of of course should always happen with EVs now. This includes the motor, the silicon carbide power inverter, the gear reduction, and also efficient packaging can be updated all over the air. So the wide performance capabilities this features are pretty cool. Of course, this is all what Stellantis says the platform will be like. We will have to see what really happens, but efficiency. So the wheel disconnects for efficiency, the cabin cabin heating and cooling, steering, braking, and acceleration are all designed to maximize efficiency. We love to see it. In terms of performance, there is a limited slip differential and the power to outform apparently any of the existing Hellcat V8s. 0 to 60 in about a two-second range. Very, very fast. 85 to 118 kilowatt-hour battery sizes. They say up to 500 miles of EV range. We know that the Tesla Cybertruck years ago said that that was their goal. We know they didn't reach that, but up to 500 miles of range. Who knows? Maybe Stellantis will be the first EV to really get there. They also say that 800-volt peak charging speeds of 270 kilowatts would might would might be available. That's what they're aiming for. And this would be definitely class leading numbers. They also support hybrid and ice propulsion, and they have the transverse and longitudinal engine mounting, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and all wheel drive options. Very flexible, as you can see. A lot of options here. A pretty strong range, I'd say. 
So what about the dimensions? Of course, there's a lot of different brands from Fiat to Rams, different sizes, just when you think about it. So here are some of the dimensions that they've said, along with some on the market EV examples for your reference. Overall length range, 187.6 to around 201.8 inches. This is, you know, in metric, that is something else. Uh, the size range is about a Model Y to a Rivian R1S, in other words. The overall width range, 74 to about 80 inches. And that is about smaller than a Model Y to a bit of the same as a Model X, which is a bit smaller than an R1S. The wheelbase range, 113 to 121 inches. This ranges from the Model Y to the R1S. The ground clearance range, 5.5 to 11.3 inches. The Model 3 is around that 5.5, and then the Land Rover Defender with the air sp suspension at the highest level goes to that higher range. So this is pretty pretty good ground clearance. And then the maximum tire, di tire diameter is 32.6 inches. These are big, meaty tires for sure, but they're not quite the... 35 inch tires that the standard off-road um you know requirement or not requirement but preference is so uh those off-road focus vehicles like the f-150 Raf raptor or ev hummer can go to that 35 inch so something to note what are the implications here with stellantis stellantis you know, launching this platform saying this is what we're going to build all of our future battery electric vehicles on well I mean, they're going to be entering really hot EV markets for sure. And if they follow through on all of this, it's going to be a pretty competitive offering out there. So they've got the mid-size crossover to full-size SUV options from the Model Y person mover options to the R1S competitors. So potentially better off-road capabilities, better acceleration, better charging, better range, again, potentially. And then also... A great option for huge sales if they really hit this and great profits, especially with the higher end vehicles that will fall under these brands that they hold under their Stellantis umbrella. And there's enough flexibility with this platform where they don't seem to be super pigeonholed, where they're able to apply a lot of different use cases across the brands and across the models that they could launch in the most popular vehicle styles, which is, of course, market competitive work right here. It's early days. A days, but the announced uh, specs are extremely competitive and believable. They aren't just totally out of nowhere. So they've got a great battery size, great peak charging speeds. And again, this would be class leading, but it's a range as well. But it um, it's not exactly achieved yet in a lot of ways. I mean, that 500 mile range, they can outperform any Hellcat. I mean, that's crazy impressive. But it's not unexpected with EVs either. Acceleration is a huge strong point and selling point of EVs, even though who needs to go that fast? It's got that instant torque, great grip and traction control. So amazing acceleration and driving performance and enjoyability potential there. And in my opinion, the flexibility is a great fit for Stellantis. I want to know what you all think for sure. They are a very electrified company so far, which is kind of, you know, the plug-in hybrid in between. They'll say we have electrified models, but of course not electric yet. Um, they do have some, but now hopefully all the battery electric vehicle potential will be realized. So, you know, maybe here is what they could do. And I want to know what y'all think they could do, but like Dodge could be the everyday vehicle, the low entry price point, competitive entry level specs, high volume sales. You know, Ram has the ProMaster EV that we talked about in a recent podcast. So that's a cool new EV announcement in the commercial space, moving in there with the more transition to delivery vehicles and work vehicles being electric. For Jeep, they could offer both the luxury and off-road trims in the EV space. They could have the higher entry prices and compete with everything from the Kia EV9 to the Rivian R1S. And then with Alfa Romeo, you know, they have the Tonale PHEV, the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle that is, you know, this is kind of similar to Dodge, but a bit more luxury for sure and some Italian styling and flair or whatever, and likely a bit nicer, a bit sportier, a bit more expensive, uh, just a different look, but something that they could really take advantage of. And then, of course, Maserati, baby, highest in, highest prices, best specs from charging to range potential. They could have the best on-road performance with on-road acceleration handling, just that ideal sports car, luxury car. 
And then, of course, more Italian styling with that luxury interior. I can see it now. I can smell it now. I can smell the leather uh, or vegan leather, maybe if they're going super sustainable. And then Chrysler. Um, I don't really know about this one. Whenever I think Chrysler, I just think La Shack. The brand recognition, I feel like, is a bit limited in that way. That's really what I know. But what would they do? Um, I'm not sure exactly what their biggest selling point is nowadays, honestly. They sell the Pacifica uh, plug-in hybrid and seems like they've discontinued all the rest. So technically, every car they sell could be easily electrified. But presumably, maybe this would be similar to the Dodge offering, but I, I feel like they don't want to cannibalize too much within the Stellantis brand. So I don't know, maybe they'll, they, I know that they have some minivans, maybe Chrysler will go that way. It just, I'm not really sure. What do you think Chrysler should do? But they do say that Chrysler will be fully electric by 2028. So we'll see that. They definitely have a great, you know, plug-in hybrid to work with. How do you think this approach is with this kind of platform? I'm really interested to know. I think that it's a great approach, a great strategy. And of course, to have it realized is essential. If you could choose a strategy like I did right there, what would it be? Let me know in the comments. They've definitely taken their time to get the battery electric vehicle launch pad set up. And hopefully they can really take off and then land back on two feet and take off running. I would love to see some impressive stuff uh, for them to deliver on the STLA large platform and to add a good spark to the EV market. Thank you for tuning into the Out of Spec podcast. I hope you enjoyed this segment and I want to know what you think. I will see you next time on the next episode. Have a tremendous day. Bye-bye.